Within Leeds, we have fuel poverty rates in 2020 of about 17%, which is slightly above the national average. Holbeck is one of the Victorian uh, terraced communities in, in Leeds, which surrounds the city centre. There's a strong correlation between solid wall homes with really limited options to retrofit and fuel poverty rates because how expensive it is to heat those homes. We know that in these communities, you can't expect landlords or owner occupiers to put significant amounts of money because they just simply don't have that. Homes are more comfortable, but they can't put savings in to help pay for the works. So we're really keen to focus on both improving the fabric of the buildings and trying to tackle some of these deep rooted social problems. The Priority Neighbourhood approach is a multi-agency approach to dealing with rent regeneration. We tackle disrepair of homes, we improve the energy efficiency of the homes, and then we work close with the communities to deal with things like empty home problems, provide debt advice, money advice, and link people up to social help or healthcare assistance. We started by insulating about 40 council homes out of a target community of about 180. We found that the priority neighbourhood approach in Leeds has been hugely transformative to the community. The streets look and feel new and there's a sense of pride and additional community cohesion in those areas now. We've had hugely positive feedback from people uh, who live in the area and um, telling us that they now no longer need to put their heating on but their homes still feel warm enough. So one home that we studied with Leeds Beckett, the internal temperature increased from 12 degrees pre-work to 18 degrees afterwards. From our perspective, we had a few key bits of learning that we really picked up. One, it's just a question of money. It's always been a challenge for us to find ways to, to fund these sorts of really deep interventions. We've only ever been able to make the Priority Neighbourhood work when we've been able to stitch together funding from a whole variety of different sources. So the first phase was funded by the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, uh, the Council and ECO. We know it costs around about £30,000 per home to do this, but we think there are huge benefits in terms of savings to the National Treasury through health benefits, educational benefits, increased VAT receipts jobs created and, and the rest of it. We think it's a really important aspect that local authorities should plan to deliver by building some of the skills and relationships with their local supply chain and work together to persuade government that this is something that needs to be invested in as a national priority. So the only way we were able to do that was by putting our own social housing in as the starting point. So the contractor knew they had the work they could do, they set up a compound in the area, there was that sense of longevity in the area, one that knew the community, could speak the language of the people within that community and had a real focus on quality. The other thing that was critical was us having a presence in the area. We worked very hard with that community to build trust and to engage the landlords and their owner occupiers in that area. We took a, a home that was empty and was falling down and rebuilt it, put the floors back in and turned that into a community hub. And we had presence in that office throughout the regeneration process. From a political perspective, it is a win-win. The people within the area had felt they'd been overlooked for many, many years. And so putting that really visible investment in the area both improved their quality of life and helped them to restore pride that they felt that somebody was looking out for them again. Now people are actually investing in their own homes and the area's become a working community again rather than a no-go area. So it really is a case of follow this model. It's relatively simple to do but it just needs significant funding.